Let's move on now. I want to ask you about the voice to parliament. For the first time, the no vote has overtaken the yes vote, according to the latest news poll. Does that surprise you? No, it doesn't. I mean, all Anthony Albanese's done in 14 months is, is actually push up everyone's cost of living and divide the country. He, he hasn't taken the Australian people into his trust. If he, if he was going to do that, he'd put the legislation around the mechanics of the voice on, in Parliament. So not only the politicians, but the Australian people would be able to see exactly what the voice would look like, how it would work, the powers, the, the extent to which who would be elected, how much they get paid. But the fact he doesn't want to even trust the Australian people with that detail, why would they trust him? I mean, this, this is the first time we have seen a referendum that is really going to divide our country, and sadly on race. We've said from the start as nationals, uh, we, we took a principal position, we couldn't re uh, support a representative body, which this is, because we've had that thing called ATSIC that failed before and we live with those consequences out here and so what we're saying is if this had just been about constitutional recognition then he would have united the country but instead despite the pleas from both myself and Peter Dutton he's ignored them and he's gone through with this with this conflation of a voice with constitutional recognition and I think unfortunately he's divided our country and while he's doing that he's unfortunately taking his eye off the cost of living pressures that Australians are feeling out there. It's a triple whammy. Everyone's mortgage is up, their power bills keep going up and their food bills keep going up because of it. And so this is what we're saying to this government. You had an opportunity not to have to focus all your energy on this, but to focus on Australians' cost of living and create a, a, a unifying moment. And he's missed that opportunity. That took leadership. It'll now take courage for the Prime Minister to step back and acknowledge he's wrong and actually re rework this. What does it say then about the no campaign? Is the strategy that's been backed by the Nationals, for example, is that cutting through? Well, I think we've been cogent in our argument and we've kept our tone uh, right about this, is that we haven't talked uh, about this trying to divide our country. It's just that we took a principal position about the lived experience that we have of representing where the disadvantage is in rural and remote areas for Indigenous Australians and that the voice won't work for that. But we've been able to cogently be able to, to articulate that we do support constitutional recognition in some form. But there should be a, a method of how we do that. And traditionally, that means we have a constitutional convention. The Prime Minister didn't even call a constitutional convention. The only convention he called, well he didn't even call it, was that of 250 Indigenous Australians, just 250, and he's taken that as our constitutional convention. Every Australian should have a say on this and, and in the design of this, uh, and he, he failed to even bring them into the trust on that. So he hasn't designed it properly, it's been ill-conceived, and he will not trust the Australian people with the detail. And when you've got lawyers from both sides, eminent lawyers from both sides, saying that, that, that this will be tested in the High Court, the only way for that business model to be tested, as we all know, is in court. That if you've got two opposing legal minds with differing opinions, then there's only one arbiter. In this case, it'll be the High Court. If the High Court interprets this, uh, this, this legislation and this constitutional change not the way the Australian people intended, then there will be long-lasting, perpetual uh, consequences for the Australian people.